Well, as products are no longer made in America, it seems the seeds of war are. The European Union now jumping on the bandwagon and placing sanctions on Iran. It's the West's attempt to stop Iran from furthering their nuclear enrichment program. They are convinced the program is being used to create a nuclear weapon. Iran insists the program is only for peaceful purposes, but it's not stopping the sanctions against the country from coming. But how much of an effect will the sanctions really have on Iran? Well, if you take a look at the exports, maybe not so much, because as you can see behind me here, uh, the largest amount of oil actually goes to China, about 543,000 barrels each day, with the second largest amount going to the EU, Turkey, India, Japan, and South Korea, all also export hundreds of thousands of barrels of oil from Iran each day. China and most of these other countries are refusing to join the oil embargo, so it's pretty much just the U.S. and the European Union. And as you can see here, the, European, the Europeans make up just 20 percent of the Iranian exports, so what purpose would these sanctions really serve? Well, for some insight, Jamal Abdi joins me now in studio. Welcome to the show, Jamal. Um, so as we just saw, uh, most of the exports, um, they don't even come from the European countries. Um, about 80 percent or so come from other countries which, which are refusing to, to hop on board and support an oil embargo. So, so how much of an effect would these sanctions really have? Uh, we'll see what, what effect they have. Uh, Europe is the second largest uh, buyer of Iranian oil, so it's going to have some impact. But uh, the fact of the matter is, you know, there's a set amount of, of oil that's available. Even though there's a spare capacity that's a little bit more than the amount that Iran puts into the market, um, if you stop buying from Iran and go to other sellers of oil, there are going to be plenty of other countries who are going to come into Iran to buy oil. Uh, that's just how the, the market goes. You're never really, I don't think, going to be able to cut off Iranian oil completely. Uh, I think what the, the people who support these sanctions, what they've said is that this is going to force Iran to sell its oil at a discounted rate and make less money off of it. So, so 20 percent, um, it, it would have an effect. I mean, just think about in business terms, if you lose 20 percent of your profits, yeah, it's going to hurt you. But I mean, but would it cripple Iran um, in the way that the West um, w wants to have that effect in order to put pressure on them to, to, to listen up and, and kind of, you know, force them to do what they want to do, which is stop whatever it is that, that they're doing with their nuclear program? I think that where we're headed, if this is really the goal is to, is to cripple Iran, then we're either headed into a confrontation with, uh, with China, which I don't think the U.S. can really afford right now. I don't know that we have a whole lot of leverage that we can uh, take out on China to force its companies to completely stop purchasing Iranian oil. Um, or we're headed to uh, you know, a blockade, which is an act of war, but actually physically blocking Iran from exporting its oil. And um, it's interesting that this blockade um, will last late during the president, Republican presidential debate. Um, you know, we saw the front runners, Newt Gingrich, Mitt Romney, um, using their usual tough rhetoric when it comes to, to war with Iran and supporting going to war with Iran. Um, Ron Paul, though, was singing a different tune. I um, want to play that clip for you. The question was, uh, you know, would you go to war? And Mitt said he would, he would, he would go to war. But you have to think about uh, the preliminary act that uh, might cause them to want to close the Straits of Hormuz, and that's a blockade. So Paul goes on to argue that blockading Iran is an act of war, an act that would prompt them to respond. So, so are the sanctions enough going to, is it just the sanctions that, that will encourage or push Iran into war, or, or is there more to it? Well, we've, we've constantly seen a ratcheting up of the pressure. I think uh, a little while ago it would have been, uh, n nobody would have expected that we would be imposing a embargo on all of Iran's exports. That was not in the cards a year ago. A year ago it was a matter of trying to block Iran from importing refi refined petroleum. Um, but we've gotten so caught up in this game of whack-a-mole where we're trying to close off every avenue that uh, Iran may possibly have uh, and, and they're constantly outsmarting and finding ways out of the sanctions and then we slap new sanctions and we've sort of lost sight of what is this exercise all about? What are we actually trying to achieve here? Um, nobody really knows what that is. Is it 
to topple the government? Is it to convince the government to come to the table for talks? Um, there isn't a clear uh, uh, policy directive there. Um, and, and a response that Iran has threatened to take was to close this, this critical waterway, the Strait of Hormuz. Um, Ron Paul last night also went on to say that Iran, they really don't want to close that waterway because um, it's not really going to help them just as much as it's not going to help the other countries that, that use this, this waterway. Yeah, Iran depends on the Strait of Hormuz in order to ship out its oil. I think that the case could be made that if a successful embargo is placed on Iran, then they have little incentive to keep that strait open uh, because they're not shipping anything out of there. However, I don't think that that's ever going to be the case. So what I really think this is is, uh, you know, a ratcheting up of pressure by Iran. This is the leverage that they have. And the funny thing is that when Iran does stuff like this, it drives the cost of oil up. Anything that Iran is losing in terms of being able to export its oil, it's making up in the increase in prices because of the tension that has been ratcheted up. And um, some, and as you said, this will affect oil prices, and some countries in the EU, EU are worried that th this act, this action will, will end up hurting their own economies. Um, so, I mean, is this really a double-edged sword? Yeah, it very well could be a double-edged sword, and that's why the EU put a six-month timeline on when they would actually put this into effect. Uh, Greece, Spain, Italy, particularly Greece, are dependent on Iranian oil. Uh, Greece buys, uh, one-third of its oil comes from Iran and they buy it on credit because nobody else is really will willing to extend Greece credit given their situation. Um, so six months from now, the EU is actually going to have to make the real decision. Are we going to go through with this? And is this potentially going to uh, uh, topple one, two, three economies uh, in the Eurozone? Iran does have leverage here. Uh, and it's really a matter of at some point the parties realizing, okay, we have more to lose than we do to gain by continuing down this course. And um, well, with the EU now jumping on board, um, ha what effect do you think that will have um, now that the EU is backing the U.S. in these sanctions um, in the bigger picture? I mean, is that, is that going to help relations? I mean, is it going to get its intended effect? Or, or really, well, what are the consequences of the EU now? now joining. I think that the consequence is really that we're, we're running out of moves here on this chessboard. Every time that we take another step, uh, that's one less move that we have and brings us closer to war. Uh, if in six months we go forward with the oil embargo, does Iran retaliate? Do they, you know, play games in the Strait of Hormuz? Um, I, I see less and less ways out of this situation. There are less available off-ramps to us every time we ratchet up. Um, so that remains to be seen. There are talks that are supposedly coming up. The question is, okay, are these, uh, are the oil embargo sanctions going to be used as leverage at the table? Are we actually using this as a lever that we can pull to compel Iran to uh, cooperate with what the West wants? Um, or are these sanctions that are just designed to put pressure on Iran for the sake of pressure? And really quickly, is this another sign that, that diplomacy is not an option and not on the table and, and that war seems to be the only thing that is left on the table? Uh, it, I mean, it's not off the table yet, but it's going to take some bold initiatives uh, by both sides, and they're really going to have to get their houses in order uh, in order to pursue real diplomacy. Jamal, thank you so much for, for weighing in. As always, pleasure to have you here. You. That was policy director for the National Iranian American Council, Jamal Abdi.